And joining us now for more on this is boxing commentator Paul Upham. Paul, great to see you this morning. What has been the fallout? Because this has been so controversial. Well, it's been universal condemnation of the decision. Everybody sort of felt that you know, Maloney clearly won the fight. There was no obvious head clash there that caused that damage. Uh, we even had Helen Mirren was outraged, and I'm sure she knows her left talks and right crosses. Um, look, in all seriousness, Andrew Maloney was robbed. Uh, it happened 29 years ago to Jeff Fennick in Las Vegas. It's happened again. You know, I feel for him so badly because in June he lost badly, lost his world title to the same fighter, Franco, to train for five months to overcome the mental scars and the physical scars. He had broken eardrums back then, trained so hard, and he looked so good in those first two rounds to the point where he clearly landed those punches. Um, and look, we're not criticising the doctor who stopped the fight at the end of round two. They had to stop the fight. Franco was in no condition to continue. Under the rules, the decision is based on was it an accidental head clash, at which point if you don't have four rounds, it's a no contest. It's basically a draw. Um, if it's done by punches, and we clearly saw punches land on that eye, um, then Mullaney wins the fight um, by TK. And he should have won that fight. He should be the world champion today, a two-time world champion. And it's just outrageous that even with the technology, you know, boxing's version of the bunker has had a stuff up and can't get it right again. Did you see the slightest of a headbutt at all in that first round or second round? We saw the commentators ESPN uh, review in frame by frame what happened and there was some inconsequential grazing there which did not cause the damage that was done. You saw the significance of, of the swelling there. The rules in the Nevada Commission said there must be clear and conclusive evidence to overturn the referee's decision. Well, the referee's initial decision was basically just a, a split second. He can't really see what was happening. He, he made a gut feel of what he felt was right. And he didn't know what was going to happen after that. But then for the commission to be able to review it with their rules and spend 30 minutes going through frame by frame and then say, well... There could be there could be an incident there where there's some head grazing. Look, it was clearly from punches, no doubt about that. Everybody saw it. So, look, they need to review the, their rules about that to get the decision right because it's pointless having this technology if we don't use it and get the right decision. That's the most important thing. It seems a head graze is quite insignificant compared to copping a punch to the head, doesn't it? Uh, what avenues does Maloney now have to take? He's got two options. He's, he's going to appeal to the Nevada Commission and they will review what happened. I think it's highly unlikely after having two of their referees, because they had the referee in the ring, then they had the referee operating the, the bunker on the side there with the head of the commission, Bob Bennett. It's highly unlikely, I think, they're going to overturn the decision. They're going to go back and say, look, it, there needs to be clear and conclusive evidence, whatever that means to them. He can appeal, and he will, to the WBA, the, the sanctioning body, the World Boxing Association. What they should do is make Andrew Mullaney the number one contender and order an immediate third fight. Um, it's, 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 it's only... Uh, it's like a backup plan for Andrew. He really should be the world champion. I don't think this decision is going to be overturned, but he'll get another fight. I, I truly believe that for justice to be done. So if there is another fight and that ruling does go ahead, could you see a fight being held here in Australia? Look, we've shown we can put big fights here. We can have big crowds on. We're going to have 40,000 outdoors at, in Brisbane on Wednesday night for State of Origin. So, look, if Bob Arum, the promoter, and Oscar De La Hoya, who's the promoter of Joshua Franco, can do a deal to bring it out to Australia, why not? If not, they'll probably just put it on the, in MGM Grand in Las Vegas. I'm not sure that Andrew Milani will want to go back to Las Vegas again, but he'll do whatever he's... He's asked to do by his promoter, Bob Arum, who's giving him the opportunity. So, look, the most important thing is that Maloney gets another chance because he deserved... He looked so good in those first two rounds. He'd overcome so much. His footwork was there, his combination punching. He went to the body. He opened up that uh, avenue to get that um, punches on the eye. He looked great, and he should be a world champion with the belt around his waist today, and it's just outrageous that he's not. When they were waiting for the decision, you were watching him walk around. It looked like he'd just been doing a sparring session. He looked in great form, didn't he? I, I always feel for boxers. Like, you know, we come... To, most people go to work every day and for them, they fight once or twice a year and their whole lives turn on the outcome of a fight. He should be the world champion today. He's not. He's now got to wait to see if he gets another opportunity. And he's put five months of training and preparation in. It's, you could see the frustration and Andrew Maloney, he worked so hard to get this win. To have it taken away when he can't do anything about it, uh, you know, you're waiting on other people's opinions, I, I can f I feel so badly for him. We just saw some pictures on the screen of promoter Bob Arum 
How disappointed was he? He was furious after this. Well, Bob Barham is a Hall of Fame promoter. He, he started promoting Muhammad Ali fights. He's been around. He's done everything. He's the biggest promoter out there still today. And he knows. The fighters know what happened. Andrew Maloney, you could see by his reaction, he knew he won that fight. Bob Barham, who was at ringside, he knew he won that fight. Um, you know, there's no doubt about it. It's just the commission getting tied up in their own regulations and rules and, and getting an outcome like this. And it's, it's, it's a bad... Pardon the pun, black eye for the sport. Yep, <laughs> I like that one. Uh, so hopefully it does happen here in Australia, a, a third fight. But with a controversial outcome like this, a no contest, when clearly he was winning uh, and should have won, what does this do for the sport? How damaging is this? Well, this is going around the world today. People are saying, once again, boxing can't get it right. And the UFC have been very successful, the rival combat sport, and trying to get their decisions right. And they were criticising boxing after it. It just makes us look silly. Um, you know, you've got to have the technology there now, but you've got to use it properly and you've got to have the regulation. So if the referee's not sure, he says, I don't know. They're basically saying because he made a call, a judgment call, which was a split second, they can't overturn it. That, that's just silly. They need to review the rules. But we've got to get it right because this puts people off the sport. They say, I don't want to be involved in boxing because they think it's brown paper bags in dark alleys. <laughs> Where did you get that one from? <laughs> you told me before we went on. Yeah. You told me. I know, me. I know. It just seems that there's, there's more to it, doesn't it? But that's it? a stigma. It yeah. creates a stigma about the sport. We don't want that perception about yeah. boxing. We don't want people to think, oh, there's another robbery in Las Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for your time. Fingers crossed we can see Maloney fight it out uh, against Franco here in Australia. Let's hope. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well